Hello kids, hope you all are fine. In this video, I am going to explain these topics. Topics to be covered in this video are Contour, Contour Interval We will learn what is Contour, what is Contour Interval Identification of different landforms on the basis of Contour What is Spot Height, what do you mean by Triangulated Height then benchmark, relative height and relative depth. These are the topics and most of the topics are totally new for you. So let's learn about these topics one by one. Now what is contour and contour interval? So we'll learn what is contour first. Now what do you mean by contour? First contour is an imaginary line joining places of same height. So what is contour? Contour is an imaginary line joining places of same height and contour lines are also called Iso heights. Iso means same, height stands for height. And symbol is used for contour is these are the circular lines. These circular lines are used for contour. And color used for contour line, that brown color is used to represent the contour line. And contour line is very important because with the help of these imaginary lines we used to depict the height of landform. And even with the help of these contour lines we used to identify the slopes of different landforms and different landforms. So contour lines are very helpful in topographical map. So this is the first part. Now next what is contour? Interval. Contour interval, as I told you, these are the imaginary lines we can use for symbol, and height is written along with each line 100, 200, 300, and 400. As four circular contour lines are given here. And with each line I have marked height. So now what is the definition of contour interval? Difference in height between two successive two consecutive contour lines. As this is line 1, line 2. So these are two successive contour lines and the difference in height between these two successive contour lines is contour interval. So what is the contour interval here? It is 100, this is 200, this is 300. So between two successive contour lines, the difference in height is 100 meter. So this is the contour interval. But in our topographical map, which is given in book, there is a fixed contour interval given there and that is 20 meter. That is the fixed contour interval given in our topographical map. So this is about contour interval. Now next we have to learn about identification of landforms. We can identify different landforms on the basis of contour. Identification of landforms. So as we have only three points given here, given in our syllabus, that is steep slope. Second one is gentle slope. Third is hill. Now first we have to learn these terms here. What slope? Slope is common in both. So what is slope? An inclined area is called slope. This inclined area is called slope. 
So if we'll identify a slope of any landform like this side, west side of this landform, this side, which slope is there? This is gentle slope. Gentle slope where we can climb easily. And the straight one, this side of, you know, slope, we can say very straight and we cannot climb easily here. So we can say this one is considered as a steep slope. And now what is hill? As we know what is hill? Hill is an elevated area above sea level. And here we, we can differentiate between mountain and hill. This is a highland elevated area that is around, you know, less than 600 meter is considered as hill. But if land form an elevated area with height 600 or more than 600 will be considered as a mountain. So the height of hill is less than the mountain. And both mountain and hill, the similarity is both an elevated area. So now we have to learn about how we can identify whether landform is having steep slope or gentle slope. Now see, as I told you, these are the contour line, imaginary line which join the places of same height. We can identify the slopes of any landform with the help of these contour. See here, if you will see the gap between two contour line, between different contour line, the gap is less. And here you will see the gap, the distance between these two contour line is more. So we have to learn one thing. If the, you know, uh, contour lines are closer, very closer to each other, then it shows steep slope. And if the gap, you know, the distance between contour line is more, or that is far away from each other, then it shows gentle slope. So this is the identification of slope on the basis of contour line. We can draw the rough drawing also here. Suppose four lines are there, 100, 200, 300, 400 meter. If roughly we will draw the line here, four lines, and we will take the extreme end of these contour line. This is first. So this one we can draw here. The two ends we can draw roughly. We mark two dots here. This is on next line. Third one on third line. And fourth on last line. Now roughly we have to draw these dots. So we'll get one landform here. This side, this landform shows steep slope and this side it shows gentle slope. So it shows the contour lines which are closer to each other show steep and far that shows gentle. We have to learn this much. We don't have to draw different landforms on the basis of contour. We have to learn if the contour lines are closer to each other, then it shows steep slope of landform. Far away from each other, it shows gentle slope of landform. Now come to the next one, hill. Identification of landform, the last part of this heading is hill. So we have to see the contour lines almost circular in shape. And the distance between contour line on both sides, west and east side is same. And the height of hill as we know is less than 600 meter. So suppose here 10, 20, then we can take the you know, contour interval here like 50, one, uh, we can say this 100, 150, 200 like this. So if will you know draw these contour line so we'll get a landform here with the help of these contour if we'll draw then we will get a conical hill conical hill have uniform shapes on both the side and how we'll get these contour line represents hill it's about we have to check the last contour line 
if suppose 300 meter is given here so it shows it that condo line represent the hill because more than 600 meter that land form will be considered as mountain fine and this is a cone shape narrow at the top so this is about the identification of hill if the contour lines are given in this way so we can say this landform is hill or we can say conical hill so this is about contour contour interval identification of landform now the third heading which we have to start that is spot height now the last uh, terms which I have told you in the beginning we have to cover spot height, triangulation station or triangulated height, benchmark, relative depth, relative height. Actually these are the different ways, these are the different ways to represent the height of landforms, building on topographical map. Spot height, now what is the definition of spot height? Spot height is method to represent height of physical feature on topographical map. So this is the method to represent the height of landform as contour lines are also used to represent the height, spot height is also used. Now what is the symbol? used for the spot height black dot so black dot on map that is the symbol of spot height and even with the black dot height is also mentioned like 100 meter so it shows the height of landform or height of any object is 100 meter so black dot that is the symbol for the spot height. Spot height is a method to represent the height of landform or we can say any object. Next, which color is used for this symbol spot height? That is black. Black color dot is given on topographical map and height is also mentioned. So this is about spot height. Now next is fourth triangulation station. Again keywords I am writing here. This is also a method to represent height of landform on topographical map we can say height of any object it can be a tree building but basically on topographical map triangulation station is used to represent the height of landform now as i have told you in the beginning spot height is also used to represent the height so suppose this is black dot spot height Suppose any landform is here, hill is here, we can imagine hill is here. If we measure the height of this hill from three sides, this side one, side two, side three. If we measure the height of this building, of this landform from three sides, so this method is called trigonometry. Trigonometry is the method by which we measure the height of building, height of landform from three sides. This term stands for three. So now which instrument is used to measure the height of landform from three sides? That is theodolite. This is E. Theodolite. This is the instrument we use to measure the height of landform from three sides. This process is called trigonometry. And if we measure landform, the height of landform from three sides, then it will be considered as triangulation station. And which symbol is used for this? 
This is the symbol, triangle only, triangle. And which color is used for this? Black color is used. And even the height is also mentioned along with the triangle, like 300 meter, 400 meter. Okay, it can be anything. Now, next topic is, fifth topic, that is benchmark. As we know, we go from Hisar to Delhi. For example, if we will go Hisar to Delhi. By road, if we are going from Hisar to Delhi, suppose you have seen that nearby the roadside you have seen white color stone on which the distance is written with black color. Like this much 20 kilometers we have covered that is mentioned on white stone with black color that shows the distance how much we have covered and uh, you know how much we have to cover. So this is also considered as a benchmark but here benchmark is different. Here benchmark again it is a method to represent height of landform or we can say any object even we can represent the height of tree also with the help of benchmark. So benchmarks are basically marks cut on stone. So basically benchmarks are the marks that we use to cut on stone means suppose this is a stone and the white color stone and with the black color it is written here like 20 meter benchmark. So this is the symbol for benchmark BM and which color is used for this black color is used to represent the benchmark. So what it shows 20 meter BM? It shows that suppose if we are, we have to go on the top of the hill. So if we are going on the top of the hill, so suppose this much height we have covered. So here benchmark will be there with white color and you know on with the help of black color height is mentioned on that particular white stone. Like 20 meter is written, 20 meter benchmark. So it means we have covered 20 meter height. And again if you will proceed further, if you will move further and you will get the benchmark of 300 meter. It means you have covered 300 meter height. So benchmark basically these are the stones on which height is mentioned. And benchmarks are used to represent the height of landform. Symbol for benchmark is BM and with BM height is mentioned and black color is used for this symbol. Now the last topic of this video is that sixth is relative height and relative depth. Now relative height and relative depth. Again relative height is used to represent the height of tank, river bank etc. And relative depth, depth is used for well well, etc. Now, basically what is the symbol for relative height, relative depth? We used to write R or in small letter also sometimes R. Now we have to understand relative height and re relative depth with the help of symbol. So blue dot. In next video, I will tell you about symbols that we, use, we have to learn from the graphical map. Suppose this is a dot, it's a blue dot and this dot is symbol for well, perennial well we can say. So this is well 
and the symbol for well is blue dot. Now, if with dot blue dot, suppose forty R is mentioned. R here, as I told you, R represent relative height and relative depth. Suppose forty R is written with blue dot with well. So what we have to write here that is relative depth of well is forty meter. Height can't be there, so we can we have to write the relative depth of well is forty meter. And if it is there, suppose we can say river. This is the symbol for river. River, and suppose outside with this border line, if it is mentioned three r, so the depth of river can't be three meter. Depth will not be there. So what three r represent here? Relative height of river bank is three meter. So in this way we have to learn that where relative depth will come, where relative height will come. We'll learn more about relative height and relative depth. Thank you, students. Have a nice day.